I was just at recently, about eight months ago. Uh, one out of every nine girls and women in that country are somehow involved in prostitution. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that until I went. In the capital where I stayed, in Addis Ababa, uh, over 150,000 girls every night sell themselves on the streets. Um, this is a big problem, and it's a deeper problem than a moral problem, in case we're quick to write them off as harlots. Let's remember that these girls have a bunch of little mouths to feed, no skill set whatsoever to feed them with, but they have a body. And a friend told them that they could make some money if they maybe tried this. And they get roped in, and they almost never come out. Uh, it is a dignity removing thing that can keep some magic. I mean, so many girls. It, you can imagine, but I drove the streets and I went at night to all of these places and row after row after row after row of girls were just standing on the street corner, not even calling out, they were just standing there with their heads down waiting for the next captain to come up. It was, it was shocking. My emotions couldn't even catch up with the, the evening. I've seen it, and it's broken. I know this because I spoke with them. I, I talked for an hour and a half uh, to a girl named Fakerte, uh, who I, maybe, I don't know if I told you about her last time. Um, Fakerte is this beautiful woman, I, we may have a picture of her if we do, we'll, we'll throw it up, um, who uh, at the age of 10, after having all eight of her brothers and sisters died of chicken pox, and one day coming home to find her mom um, had ended her life because of grief over it, Fakirche left home and went to be a house servant at somebody's house where she was making very little money until at 15 a friend came to her and said, hey, guess what, I, I work at this bar down the street. You can come down there and do what I'm doing for a lot more money than what you're doing now, so why don't you join me? Fakirche went that night as a 15-year-old virgin. The bartender got word that she was, in fact, one, which is a high price. He auctioned her off to the highest bidder that night, who sold her off to a guy who got raped, uh, who, who raped her, and uh, ushered her into a life of uh, prostitution. Shortly after that, um, she contracted HIV, as three out of four of these girls will um, in Ethiopia. Shortly after that, one of her clients gave her the child uh, that she has now, who's now five years old. And before you think to yourself, this is so outlandish, right? It's so, it's so it seems so hyperbolic, right? Just so crazy. I, I can't tell you how many more stories I heard of girls whose stories were even worse than this. I don't know how it's possible, but it's possible. It's just a bad situation. And you know what? Jesus sees that. He sees it now. Like as we're here enjoying this evening, he's there seeing that now. And he's saying, no. He has said no once before. On the cross, definitively. Amen? But he is saying no very practically tonight. To folks like you and me, through folks like Mocha Club. I'll tell you what they do. They set up a shop there. And every quarter, they request if these girls want to, to join uh, their safe house. And they bring these girls out voluntarily. They come into the Mocha Club safe house. And for a period of six months, these people do nothing but care for their souls. Free licensed counseling. Free group therapy sessions. All free medical coverage. All free nutritional needs. Free daycare for them. Six months, they just care for them. They share the gospel with them too. Nine out of ten of these girls accept Jesus as their Savior. That's the last stat I heard. Praise God for them. Praise God for them. And you know what I love about them? The reason I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about it is because they're. What the folks at Mocha Club do is strategic. They know that there's more to a person than just their soul, there's a whole person there with all the complexities that, that that entails. And so you know what they do after that six months? For the next three months, they train them in a new skill set. 
Because if the only thing you know how to do to make money is sell yourself, doesn't matter how much soul care you get, once you get out, you're going to be very inclined to go back unless you know how to sew and knit and run your own business. All of a sudden, the doors of possibilities open. All of a sudden, the dignity that was stripped from you every night is being restored to you every day in Jesus' name. It's awesome. You know how I ran into Frank Carrington the first time? It, it wasn't our long conversation. That was the second meeting. The first time, we bumped into each other, uh, um, walking around the corner by where the Mocha Club complex is. And she said she couldn't talk right then. And we asked her why, and she said, because she was late. Uh, and this was in the middle of the day. We didn't know what was going on. And we asked her, she said, well, I'm late for work. Uh, Frank Carrington works as a chef now at a restaurant uh, during the day. Um, do you know what she does at night? Nothing. And for every one of those stories, I, I promise you, is, is glad as that makes it hard. There are a thousand more girls on that corner tonight. And, I, and I'm asking, can we part with 18 bucks a month to do something about it? I would submit that I think we can. Um, this is not an appeal to you who um, are well-to-do or, or wealthy folks. Paul praised the Macedonians in Scripture because they gave out of their poverty. So I'm, I'm not impressed if you're rich or poor. That doesn't scare me in this. I'm, I am concerned uh, about what the Spirit is compelling you to do tonight. Um, and this is also not a guilt thing either. Guilt is so 2012. Um, I'm talking about um, gratitude. God has done much for me. I want to extend that love to others. So that's the